from uh, the workup sketch that we just did to um, the final drawing um, before you add color. So, again, here's the workup sketch. Got all my values in there um, planned out. I have uh, my reference photos. I also have my character design done. So this will make it easier when I start to work on that. Um, finish art because I have the overall look of my character there. All right. Um, let me just save this. Fishing man workup. All right. Um, I'm going to do a new one. And even when I'm working digitally, I like to overall think about uh, how it would work if I was still doing it traditionally. And most illustrations are done. Um, if they're going to be intended for a book, um, so they should be illustrated around 11 by 17. Okay, that's the size of most um, illustration board paper. Um, you usually want to draw your illustrations larger and then shrink them down to whatever book size you're going to have them. Um, so if you're going to do it for a poster, that's, you know, um, big, you'll want your drawing to be a little bit bigger as well. So uh, this is the way it's done for books, um, and so this is the technique I usually use. Um, so I'll do this, do this at 11 by 17 and 300 dpi. You also just want this to be a big enough document so you can zoom in really close to get those details in your drawings figured out. Okay, I'm now going to take this and um, copy and paste this into this new document. So I just merged it down so the lines and the values are on one layer. Command C, Command V. Now again, to uh, transform this and change the size of anything um, on a layer or a selection, I hit Command T, and now I can stretch this out. And once I'm done, I have it the right size, I push Enter there. Now this will be good. Um, I'm going to adjust the colors of this just like I did on the last one. Image Adjustments Channel Mixer. Blues turned up, constant turns up. Uh, command U to adjust hue saturation. Again, just a little bit cooler and a little bit lighter. I don't need it quite that dark. I can also adjust this with opacity later on. Um, but this will be okay for now. I'm going to lock that layer, no longer needed. And do, now I'll do this as a final drawing. All right. Um, so it's really up to you what brush you would like to use here for this. Um, but you have to use something where you can get some clean, smooth line work. So if you want to keep it more of a, you know, looking like a pencil drawing, you can do that and use this same pencil brush that we used. But overall, I don't want it to be like sketchy like this. Even if you're using a pencil brush, um, still try and get clean, smooth line work. Thinking about line quality, so thicker lines in the foreground, um, thinner lines further away. So you can use that brush if you want. You can also use the most common one, the hard round, um, hard round pressure size. This one has a really pretty nice clean look to it. Um, the one I'm going to use, since I'm from a comic book background, I like to pretend like I'm inking this. So this inker organic, inker rotation, inker round, any of these should work well to get really nice, clean, smooth line work. Okay, so as I'm working on this, I'll also kind of have my reference up. So this guy, I'm actually going to flip this. Flip that guy there. Um, I'll pull up my character design as well. Character designs are especially important um, if you're ever going to be repeating the look of your character. So if you're doing an entire comic series, um, storyboards over and over, anything like that, you want to keep a consistent look for your character. Since this is kind of just a one-off illustration, I can change things on it, but it's still going to be helpful to have that character design figured out. 
this is on its own layer, right? Yeah. So always make sure that, you know, that ink is on its own layer. So hopefully whatever you've been practicing with some different brushes, you can find which one you like the most. Old guys have nice, really big ears, make for interesting characters. And you're just slowly going to go through your whole drawing and get that kind of line quality that you like. Or that's um, that works for your drawing. So I'm looking at the folds in this guy's arm um, right now to help me get some of those clothing folds. Hands have to deal, um, help show the character a lot, you know, what sort of hands. Do they have old beat up hands? Do they have very slender, delicate, beautiful hands? Uh, that shows a lot about who the character is, so I want to make this guy's hands feel old. Get some old bumps in there. Kind of square fingers, maybe even make them look a little kind of crooked. So I'm pretty zoomed in on there. So every so often, again, make sure you're zooming out um, so you don't get too caught up in one little area of your, your drawing. It is a really long, smooth line. So if I do want to turn up the smoothing for anything like that, or you want something that is a little harder to control, that one was good, just not quite long enough. There we go. That will help. But remember, it does cause it to lag just a little bit. Usually I have just a little bit of smoothing on, like 5% or so. All right, so I'm not going to sit here and uh, have you watch the entire thing. You can see the idea here. Turn that off as I go. Um, so I'll go ahead and get all this line work done. Then I'll uh, do another video when I, um, when I start to add the color in.